Hi guys, it's Mavis and me, except today it's just me, no Mavis. Um, this video is kind of off topic, has nothing to do with service dogs, and I debated whether I wanted to actually even post it to my YouTube channel, um, but I don't know. It's, you know, we each, we each are unique individuals, and we're brought together in this community because of our service dogs. Um, Hopefully we're all trying to help each other and give each other ideas on how to make, you know, pro problems that we've had that we've worked through with our dogs and moved on to the other side. Um, and hopefully people can all learn from each other. And in light of that, I, I like to teach people. I like the idea that some of the knowledge that I've gained over my years and through my schooling, um, that I can help and share that with other people who um, don't have the opportunities that I was given. Um, in light of that, this videos may be a little graphic for most people, I want to warn you, um, there's blood, um, and it seems barbaric, however, life on a farm is not always, you know, flowers and butterflies. Sometimes you have to do things and, and animals have to go through things to get through to the other side so they can be more comfortable, and this is a good example of, of that. Um, you know, this is not service dog related. I have a service dog, but that doesn't define me completely. Um, I'm also a farmer, and I have a degree in animal science, and we've farmed for 25 years now, um, and I've learned a lot doing that. And so I wanted to share this information with other farmers, not necessarily service dog people, but people who might have a small farm and find that they have a baby goat or a baby lamb that's born with this condition and see if they can maybe treat it at home. Um, not only does it save money, which, you know, I know everything's not, doesn't come down to money, but when you have an animal that is not worth much, you know, you have a baby lamb that's worth maybe $75 at weaning, you can't spend $250 to have the vet come out and fix every little problem. So hopefully, hopefully everybody will understand that. I don't want a bunch of comments about, you know, what a monster I am or how oh, this is just so evil or, you know, we shouldn't eat meat or I don't want to hear any of that stuff. So please don't post that down in the bottom um, of this video. <laughs> Nobody cares, <laughs> you know? If you don't like it, don't watch it. I'm warning you now that you can turn it off and this doesn't have to be a part of your memory or your dreams or anything like that. But for people who are trying to do the best they can on their small farm and fix things themselves, this is easily fixed. This is something you can do at home. Um, it's, it's a little scary at first, um, but when you see that it works and this baby animal will have much more comfort it's totally worth it. It's totally worth doing it. I feel bad for the animal. I wish there was some way I could, you know, take away all the pain to start with that's involved, but I believe that the small amount of pain that I inflict to fix this problem is way less than the pain she's endured up to this point of having this problem. Um, the problem I'm going to talk about today is called entropion, and I'll get into the details of that um, in a few minutes. All right? Okay, so we're talking about a normal eyelid. And we basically have a structure that looks like this. Here's your eyeball. Okay. Here's the rim of your eyelids. Right? And then you have the hair that comes off. Like this. Right? Okay. In entropion, what you end up with is you still have this, like that. And here's the surface of the eye. But this part, instead of rolling out with the eyelash out here, it curls up inside, underneath the eye, kind of, all along the bottom rim of the eyeball. So, this entire rim from here to here often is turned inside out, so that all those little hairs that should be on the outside keeping dust and debris out of the eye are now actually rolling in and scratching the surface of the eye. and you end up with lesions along the bottom of the eye. It's more common in the lower lid than the top lid. Um, it can happen probably in, I don't know, any mammal, I would think. Maybe lizards and stuff, I don't really know. But it's most common on farms in lambs and, and goat kids. And uh, it's pretty easy to take care of at home. Um, the first thing you can do is, if you have it's a real mild case where it's just 
rolling in a little bit and causing irritation. And usually you'll find this within 24 hours of birth. Um, what you want to do is you take, that sounds horrible, but you take a needle full of penicillin with like a, C, a CC or a milliliter of penicillin and you inject it at the corner of the eye down into that the eyelid, the lower bottom part of the eyelid and you run your needle all the way up to here and then you release the penicillin as you're withdrawing the needle. So you basically make a big water balloon right here under the eye, okay? And what that does is that causes the rim here to kind of swell up and pull away from the surface of the eye. And because penicillin is slightly irritating, it can create a stiffness in these tissues that will actually keep it from rolling back in when it absorbs. You'll end up, it'll, so oftentimes that will just fix the problem. Um, However, on this little doling that we're going to do the surgery on, um, that did not work. It failed within 24 hours. Her eyelid was rolled right back in on her eye. Um, and with her, with her, her lower lid literally came down and did nearly an entire roll like that onto the surface of her eye. So she started getting um, a lesion at the base of her eye here instead of, you know, nice healthy eye. All this sitting there blinking and blinking and causing an irritation on the surface of the cornea there created a problem. So we're going to actually end up, instead of doing the injection, which we did already and it didn't work, we're actually going to remove a chunk here. So we'll draw another picture. This is going to be kind of hard to keep track of what I'm doing once the goat is actually in hand because she's going to squirm and it's hard. So here's our eyeball. Here's the problem. There's just too much skin under here. There's not enough structurally dense tissue in this eyelid to keep it stuck to the surface of the eye. It wants to just like kind of willy-nilly roll in onto the surface of the eye. So my goal today is to remove a chunk of skin like that. Um, you can stitch it afterwards, though it, you don't really need to. Um, it just causes more trauma and it also is, you know, now you've got another needle, another sharp pointy thing right near the surface of an animal's eye, which we like to avoid. So I'm just going to take a pair of uh, fancy shears and cut this little football shape out from underneath her eye and uh, that should take care of it. The goal is if you take out, the goal is to take out the right amount. You don't want to take out a huge pile because then you're going to end up with an animal that's gonna have an eye that goes like this. And she's not gonna be able to blink. And this this part of her eye at some point will dry up and become a problem for her. Um, and if you don't take off enough, it just continues to roll in. You still end up with this. So the goal is to try to take off the right amount. Now, knowing how much to take off, that's kind of tricky. Um, but there's actually, it's a pretty forgiving surgery. So if you don't you know go nuts and take off a big you know quarter size, um, you're probably going to do her a favor by fixing this. Okay, here's a classic case of entropion. This little doling. Right now the eyelid is rolled normal, but that's because I pulled on it and exposed it to the surface. Um, you can see she has corneal abrasions inside there. And I've tried to fix this a couple different times. The first time was with a shot of penicillin. You inject on one side and fill the whole kind of eyelid up with, with penicillin, which causes an irritant, which sometimes, in a not severe case, will actually cause it to roll out and stay out because of the scar tissue. That did not was not the case with this doling. It rolled right back in. Um, I've manually fixed it, like every morning and every night for a couple days, but it just doesn't want to stick. Oops. So what my plan here is because she's getting more and more. Um, damage to the eye surface there is we're just going to cut a section out of the lower eyelid here like a football shape out of the bottom there and just leave it and what it'll do is as it heals up it'll actually pull the eyelid out of the eyeball off of the eyeball and cause it to get a little scar across here which will hold it out hopefully now the trick is not to take off too much and not to leave too much um, Otherwise, it won't quite do the job, but you kind of just have to do a little guessing game here. And ideally, then that will cause the eyelid to sit flat against the eye, 
and that corneal abrasional heal and she should have perfect eyesight again uh, within a few weeks to a month I guess. Um, anyway, so that's the plan for today. I think it, all this can go. Okay, just don't go all the way through. So she's got, you know, so she's looking out of two slits. <laughs> I think you're right though. See, this is, this, look at all it's that extra genius. skin. Yeah. You can see it's all, there's her, there's her eyelid where it should be. And all this extra skin here is what's causing the problem. The pressure. Well, I don't know if it's causing the problem. It's not helping this, it, it's, if it were, like this, it would help hold that flat. But see how it's all just kind of bunched up here. So by removing that and giving that a chance to heal shut, in theory, it should make all this quite a bit more tight so that that eye lid sits on the eye surface instead of rolling under the eye there. You should use your fingers. Just be right. careful, those scissors will cut your finger. One, two, three. <coughs> nope. Okay, so here's the piece that got removed. See, it's kind of a football shape. That's actually perfect. That's exactly what I was hoping would happen, though I was not wishing for two shot, two clips. I was hoping to do it in one. But now, when this heels shut, just like when you get a cut, the scar tissue is going to be tighter than the original. Tissue. Yeah, the scar tissue has tighter. more matrix to it, more stiffness to it. Uh, which will help. So see here, there's a the little snip. Uh, it's not that big a deal. Do you want to bring uh, it farther back toward the rear there? Uh, Maybe. I think you might want to. Uh, but you can see, it's not that horrible. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't want it done to me, I admit. But it's this a lot is going to be. Than the eye abrasion oh, it's going to be so much weeks. better. She's going to be so much yeah. more comfortable now that her eye's not going to hurt. You know, her eye can start to heal. I don't blame you one bit. I would cry too. Try not to pick up too much. Good job. That's a nice cut. Right, so there you go. See the nice loop out of there? You'd be surprised when it heals. You mm -hmm. won't even see it. It'll be almost like it didn't exist. Um, but it will help to pull this eyelid back off the surface. And keep it where it is today. The eyelashes off the surface of the eye there. So we'll do a follow up. I don't know. Next time we remember we're there three, four days from now. So you can see how it's looking. Yeah, good girl. Sorry, baby girl. Ain't she just darling though? Yeah, I know. It's gonna feel better now. <coughs> Poor little baby.